All right, everybody, Matt here looking at the final Kodiak block. This one is the Curve Sequencer. Uh, just an amazing addition, one of the best blocks out there now. And if it looks familiar, it's because it is essentially Massive's performer modulator. Uh, this is one of the more popular modulators of all time, in my estimation. Uh, it's launched the birth of thousands of dubstep careers. And if you wonder why, it is because... It's fantastic at what it does. It's a 16-step sequencer. It's actually two of them. And you can actually crossfade between them. And you can get sounds like this. So essentially, this is running a sine wave and a noise generator. And these two different performer modulators are basically creating that drum beat. And why is that? Well, unlike a 16-step sequencer where it's just on or off, this is actually loading like an envelope curve. So you can get a more varied uh, sequence, if you will. And what this is doing is simply loading curves. And this one, for instance, is pointed to the pitch input of a sine wave. So essentially a pitch envelope on a sine wave, which is an 808 kick, right? And where it gets fun is when you start to load different curves. And of course you can blend. Just like a crossfader between the two of them. So essentially you have this now in reactor blocks. So this gives you a lot more flexibility. You're not tied to something like Massive's uh, synthesis architecture. You can basically do it however you like. So let's go ahead and throw in something. Let's get the duality OSC in here and we'll just kind of create a sound. I probably won't make the most amazing sound, but this will be to really kind of demonstrate what it can do. Uh, one thing worth noting while I build this is that look at the, the GUI on this. It's this is something you can't do with like hardware modules. And uh, that's what kind of makes it unique. And that's one thing that the developers said that they wanted to do with these Kodiak blocks was make something that you can't really be replicated in a hardware modular because you simply can't show these features and do a lot of this stuff that it can do. So it's nice to have. And of course, blocks play nice with your modular setup, connect them together and you get the best of both worlds. So what else do I want here? I want to filter. Let's just throw a state variable filter and let's patch this thing up. Okay. Notice I don't even have a pitch input. I don't really need one in this case. So let's come out of the main into the filter, out of the filter, into the VCA. And then we're going to use the output of sequencer one. This is sequencer two at the bottom. Sequencer one will basically modulate the VCA. And we're not going to hear anything because I haven't even put a gate into it yet. So let's see what we got. Okay, what you're hearing first is I have a separate module from Curve Tracks. This is one of the pre-made ensembles showing what you can do. Essentially, there's a really cool kind of um, modulated kick and snare, or kick snare hi-hat type thing. And we'll look at that in just a second. So let's start here and see if we can get some sound. I'm gonna mute that one out. And you can hear something, so let's actually boost the level. Problem is this is very low. Of course we can take it out of key tracking and just select the frequency that way too. So the first thing I want to do is come to the curves. This is where you're going to load the different curves. Automatically, I could just select random levels off those same curves. I could hit curve and keep the levels as they were, but load different curves per step, or just hit all, and you're going to kind of get a random sequence each time you do this. So that might get a little too random for us. Let's go ahead and actually draw on our own curves. And I'm gonna throw a bunch of these sawtooths in. And this is essentially going to just give us kind of like a 16th note staccato rhythm. So 
So this is one thing you can use it for. Do a uh, use it as like a gate on and off. And of course, what's cool about it, why would you want to do this? Well, you can get uh, a couple different variations. Just by adjusting some curves, you get more interesting dynamics. <laughs> Now what's brilliant about this is again, we can change our length and then also offset it. So we're able to kind of come in here and create uh, variations and kind of like these polyrhythms. <laughs> Very simple. So, and of course, these can be modulated. Uh, you know, basically move <laughs> move the sequence around. Uh, very nutty. Now, let's uh, let's create a sustain note fully. So this is just going to be an on message. Let's mute that, of course, and let's have the second guy modulate the filter. So this is what was used a lot of times in Massive. Um, for instance, let's just get some random spikes of the filter happening here. Now, maybe you want to change the length of these. By default, it's set to auto, but you can actually make a longer gate if you want or even a much shorter one. So mess around with that as well. What's also cool about this is maybe I want this to be open and I want this to be bipolar. So now we'll get a much better. We're kind of spanning the entire range of this uh, modulation area now. So very slick, very slick beautiful for that. Uh, if we wanted, I guess we could run this out into pitch and try to create like <laughs> that different pitch too. You know, sort of like massive stepper, but again, probably not best for that, but play with it anything. There's no rules to this kind of stuff. Now, Let's go ahead and mute that out and let's look at uh, A. Kind of get a sense of what this is doing. So I've cleaned up this ensemble a little bit to make it a little more easy to understand what's happening. But essentially you have the flip gen. Remember we said it could be white noise. And this is controlled by uh, lane two or sequencer two. And that is basically just running into the VCA to open it up and close it. So it kind of sounds like a hi-hat. And look how it's going on six. So you're gonna get a different rhythm over and over. And of course we can move this around. Maybe we just want 16 on hi hats. Maybe we wanna change the tone of it. Again, that's what's pretty cool about this flip gen. It's very shapeable right away. Now, what else can we do? Well, curve one, Sequence one has a kick drum. And again, that's nothing but like a sine wave with some pitch modulation. And you can just see how kind of inventive you can get with it. You can. Each curve is gonna affect this modulation very differently. Maybe some FM from the flip gen into this. And you can see just how quickly you can make really amazing kick drums with just a few blocks. Really fun. So thank God it's in here. Again, drive your external stuff, drive your internal stuff, whatever you'd like to do. It's in a fantastic and use it the same way as that shift by kind of offsetting the length and the and the and modulating the offset position and get really cool variations. Cheers.